Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Pastor Caleb. Happy Friday and welcome to chapel. Before we start our service, I want to ask you and see if you can remember what our school theme Bible passage is. Does anybody remember it? Maybe if I get you started, you can say it with me. All right, here we go. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Did some of you remember it? Anybody? Let's try it again. I'll put it up on the screen and you can say it along with me. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Very good. We've talked about this Bible passage a few times this year, and today we're going to focus on it again. Do you remember what we said at the beginning of the year? We said when it says, therefore is God's chosen people holy and dearly loved. That means that what God says about you is that you are chosen by him, you are holy in his eyes because of Jesus, and you are dearly loved. Right? That's why we can call God our Father, because he dearly loves us. And so today, we're going to talk about how do we live? Knowing that we're holy, chosen, dearly loved. Okay, how does God want me to treat the people around me? So let's begin our service like we always do in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we go sing our first song? All right, come with me and let's go sing. Let's sing Jesus Paid It All. And I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray, Find in me that all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. died my soul to save my lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt. Jesus 
us paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. All right, boys and girls, let's dig into God's Word together. I said today we were going to look at our school theme Bible passage, and the part we're going to look at is the part where it says, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Today, we're really going to talk a lot about that word, humility. Do you know what humility is? Maybe you've heard the word before, maybe you've even heard it used, but maybe you're not totally sure what that means. Let's go straight to the Bible to find out if maybe we can get some answers. So we're going to take a look at a passage from Philippians chapter 2, and I want you to listen to it and see if you can tell me afterwards what is humility. So in Philippians 2 it says this, In humility, consider others more important than yourselves. In humility, consider others more important than yourselves. Okay, do you figure out what humility is? Humility is like saying, I don't need to be first. You can go first. (laughs) Humility is saying, you first. Not me first, but you first. That's what humility is. So when God says, I want you to have humility, he's saying, I want you to put other people first. I don't want you to put yourself first. How do you think you're doing at that? Do you think we do a really good job at putting other people first? Maybe not. Maybe as you think about what you see around you, you don't see a lot of humility. Maybe out at the park or or on the playground. Maybe you see a lot of people saying, Me first! I get the ball now! It's my turn! I want to be it! I'm going to be first in line! Yeah, I think we see a lot of people saying, Me first in life. And I don't think we just see a lot of people saying me first. I think if we're honest, you and I both, we do that a lot, don't we? We want people to think that we're important. We want people to like us, and so we like to put ourselves first. Not just on the playground, but also in the classroom, also at home, and even in just our minds and our hearts. Think about this question for a second. If I were to ask you, Do you want people in your class to think that you are the smartest? Do you want people in your class to think that you are the strongest or the fastest or the funniest or the most popular? I think most of us would say, yes, of course I want people to to think that I'm good, to think that I'm great, to think that I'm the best. That isn't humility. That's more what God calls pride. And today, God wants us to know, God wants to tell us that he wants Christians to be humble, to have humility, not to have pride, not to always say me first, but instead to say you first. In fact, God gives us an amazing example of what it looks like to have humility. Can you guess who it is who's a really great example of humility? Yeah, you probably guessed it. It's Jesus. Jesus is a great example of what it means to have humility. If humility means saying, you first, Jesus is an amazing example of that. Why? Well, because Jesus, he's, he's God. And yet when he came to this earth, what did he spend all of his time doing? Did he spend all of his time saying, well, I'm the most important, I'm God, so why don't you bring me some food and throw me a party and put me up on a throne and everybody praise me because I'm first and I deserve to be first? Uh, No, I don't remember any Bible stories like that, do you? No, instead, what did Jesus do? He spent all of his time serving other people and helping them, making sure that their needs were met and sharing the truth with them. Jesus wasn't worried about being first. In fact, Jesus put himself last. He was the king of the universe. And what did he become? A tiny little helpless baby. He was the ruler over all, and yet what did he do? He died the death of a common criminal being crucified on a cross. 
Jesus himself said it this way. He said that he didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is the best example ever of humility because his goal in coming to the earth wasn't to be praised, wasn't for everyone to serve him, but his goal was to save you and me and to share his love with as many people as possible. And you know what, Christians? That's your goal too. Your goal isn't to die for the sins of the world, but your goal is to share Jesus' love with people, to make sure that they're loved and taken care of, and that they might be saved too by knowing about Jesus. My goal in life is not to be first. Your goal in life is not to be the most important not to be first, but to show others Jesus' love. In fact, do you know, it's kind of ugly sometimes when we try to put ourselves first. We want to make sure everyone knows that we're smart or funny or popular. You know what we sometimes end up doing? When we put ourselves first, where does that put everyone else? It pushes them down. It puts them in a less important place. When we put ourselves first, we put other people down. And, and God says, Christians, I, that's not how I want you to live. Do you know you're already loved? You're holy. You're chosen. You're dearly loved. You're a child, a son, a daughter of, of God. Everything's taken care of. You don't need to put yourself first. I'm already going to take care of you, God says. So Christians, we, we can be humble. We can have humility. We can say, you first to other people because God has already taken care of us. And remember maybe that familiar passage, we love because he first loved us. Remember that one? We love because he first loved us. Loved us. That's why we want to show humility because Jesus showed humility for us first. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about how can we show humility in our everyday lives. So here, here at school, in the classroom, or at recess, it might mean literally saying, you first. Let's say we're playing a game and we're, we're taking turns. You can say, you know, I, I don't need to go first. You can go first. You can have the ball first. You can be it. You can be up first. That's okay. Maybe uh, at home, maybe at home, when you get home with your brothers or sisters, when you're deciding what game to play or, or what to watch or what to do, why don't you tell your brother or sister, you know what? You first. You can pick. You can pick what movie we're going to watch tonight. Maybe that is what humility looks like. Maybe you can say, Mom, Dad, you first. I know there's games I want to play. I know there's stuff that I want to do, but I know that you need help. So you first. Because that's what Jesus did for us, right? So that's the love we want to show to other people. Christians, we, we can say, you first, to the people around us, because that's what Jesus said to you. He said, you first. He made himself a servant. He was willing to die for, for you and me to, to take away our sins, all those sins of selfishness, all the times we said, me first. Jesus came to wipe those sins away. So, how can we say, you first, this week? That's my challenge to you, is to find some ways with your friends, with your classmates, with your family, find some ways to say you first. Find some ways to show Christian humility. And maybe to put others first. Here's one last example for how you could show humility. You know, instead of trying to make sure everybody else knows how smart, how funny, how strong, how popular you are, what if instead you spent that time trying to lift up somebody else? Maybe it's a, a classmate. What if you spent your time helping everybody else see how amazing they are? Helping everybody else see how smart they are, or strong, or funny. It'd be a beautiful thing to love someone else like that and to lift them up because that's what Jesus did for you and for me. Should we pray about that? Let's fold our hands. Dear Jesus, thank you for showing great humility when you came to this earth to serve us and to die on the cross for us. Help us to show humility in how we live. Help us to say, you first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go sing a song together. Let's sing, Take the World, But Give Me Jesus. Take 
Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joys are but a name. But His love abides forever through eternal years the same. Oh, the height and depth of mercy, oh, the length and breadth of love, oh, the fullness of redemption, pledge of Let's pray together. Let's go to our God, fold our hands, we can close our eyes, bow our heads, and think about our Savior, Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you for always saying you first when you were on this earth. Thank you for dying on the cross for us to take away all of our sins of selfishness and pride. God, help us to say you first when we're dealing with other people. Help us to be humble. Help us to be gentle. Help us to be patient because that is what you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's, let's go sing a, another song together. Let's sing Cornerstone. Trust the sweetest frame, but 
seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within Boys and girls, receive the blessing of your Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, thank you for coming to chapel today. I hope you have an excellent Friday, an awesome weekend. And I always just really enjoy being together with you. Even though we're doing this uh, on a video, I just want you to know I'm so happy that we get to learn about our God together and that we get to sing together, that makes me really happy. It's the best part of my week. So have a great Friday, have a great weekend, and let's throw it over to Pastor Caleb for some birthday singing. Hi everybody, happy Friday. Let's sing happy birthday to the people who have birthdays this week. Will you sing along with me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ariana, Maria, Benny, and Daniel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everyone. Have a good Friday and an awesome weekend, and I'll see you soon. And I think we might have a Shark Award winner. So let's see who it is. Good morning, students and teachers. It is time to give out the February Shark Award. This month's recipient was nominated for the Christian kindness they show to classmates, as well as their academic success this school year. The student loves setting goals for themselves and is driven enough to achieve them. This student is responsible and proactive, working ahead on assignments. This student listens to their teacher's expectations and follows them. They love participating in class and taking ownership of their learning. This student is a great example of humbleness to others. This student is extremely hardworking and does not stop until the goals are achieved, finding a way to learn from mistakes along the way. Finally, the student is always willing to help others, especially because they enjoy learning. 
The February recipient of the Elementary Shark Award is in fourth grade. It is a girl. Congratulations to Yohesi Guzman.